welcome today we are going to discuss about the eye tracking system so last classes we did about the electroencephalogram and epoch emotive eeg now today we are going to understand it's a detailed study about the eye tracking so when we are talking about cognitive ergonomics behavioral understanding of a person in a particular working setup this eye tracking system actually help us to understand that in objectively right so this is a kind of instrument that we are going to uh, use for uh, you know tracking the eye movement and how we are going to understand the uh, kind of movement we have in the eye and how, what is the connection between that with our cognitive behavior okay so that we are going to discuss it today this is very interesting uh, topic and it is ex being extensively used in the cognitive science and cognitive ergonomics field and where we are talking about you know understanding the person understanding the person's cognitive behavior so those cases this particular technique or method method is very fruitful and we use it very frequently so let us first know uh, background of this uh, particular topic and slowly we will go ahead with the technical aspect of this particular method okay so this is a technique that can measure the eye movement activities okay so suppose i am looking at some object and how my eye is moving and how that is connected and how it is connect giving an indication about the cognitive behavior of uh, that particular person or that particular moment okay so that we are going to understand through eye tracking system so it actually measures the visual activity on a given stimuli okay so if there is a stimuli be, uh, what is the impact of this that stimuli on the visual activity that we are trying to understand so what exactly we are going to do we are trying to understand where exactly the person is looking at what is being not looked at so suppose there is a screen a person is looking at some direction or some particular object right now what is being observed what is being not observed so what is being ignored so that a thing also we can understand and how pupil reacts to different stimuli if there is a stimuli which is of red color and of a particular size and if there is another color which is maybe yellow or something else and the shape of the color is you know object is different then how they are you know how the pupil is reacting towards that differently so these are the aspect that we are going to understand through this particular system so it can also analyze the human behavior by following the eye movement and eye tracking related to the cognitive processes so how we are thinking how we uh, when we are looking at some object what is the perception of that particular person about that particular object okay so that perception that cognition that we want to understand through this eye tracking system before we go ahead let us little bit understand the anatomy of the eye so in this picture you can see what is the uh, kind of structure we have in the eye right so it, it's not mandatory that you know all these nomenclatures properly but yes if you want to study through eye tracking and you know the anatomy of the eye it becomes very easy for you to understand the logic that why you are measuring what okay so that is why this structure this anatomy is important so here you can see the major important uh, part that is the lens is situated here this is the pupil and which is being uh, either based on the concentration level based on the visual acuity it is required it gets constricted and it gets dilated also based on the impact of the environment physical environment right uh, 
okay so uh, this is the cornea that we have and these are the sclera and here you can see this the optic nerve this is the optic disc okay this is the retina where the images are going to form so this is the basic structure of your eye okay now let us understand some important uh, nomenclature or uh, some important terminology which is going to help you in the eye tracking process first one is pupil so it actually what it does it controls the amount of light that can enter in the eye so pupil can get constricted or can get dilated right so it actually helps you to understand that what amount of light you are allowing to go inside your eye so that is the pupil second is cornea so together with a sclera it forms a protective layer of an eye and two photoreceptors okay third is retina so the light sensitive layer of photoreceptor at the back of the eye it receives the images here the images actually forms and sends them through the, uh, as electrical signal through the optic nerve of the brain and final one is the photoreceptors we have two types of photoreceptors rod cells and cone cells so rod cells are responsible for the peripheral vision and sensitive to the objects movement and cone cells which provides the central vision and do well in bright light and discriminate light okay so these are the some important terminology we need to know before we go ahead with the eye tracking system so when we are talking about eye tracking system definitely we are going to give some kind of visual stimuli so let us understand what are the broad classification of these stimuli first one is the video clip okay something is moving second one is the images is a static image and third one is the static text so these are the three major visual stimuli that we are going to receive when we are talking about the eye tracking system or measurement through eye tracking instrument okay now some important terminology that we are going to use throughout the eye tracking measurement system and these are the only uh, thing that we are going to measure right so first one is fixation second is saccade third is regression and fourth is interest area okay so first understand what is fixation so fixation means a semi stationary movement on a specific area suppose there is a sentence okay now i am going to read that sentence by reading single words right so what i am going to do i will read the first word then i'll move to the second then third then fourth and like likewise i will keep on moving but whenever we are moving from one word to another word there is a pause on each word so that pause we call it as fixation now here in this particular uh, example you can see the knight attack the windmill on his donkey now see everywhere the knight attacked so here when we are talking about maybe it's a long word so why we are giving pause here and here then windmill then on and this donkey this is an example okay so we are giving pause every certain interval in this particular uh, sentence when we are reading it right so these semi stationary movements we are going to call them as fixation the second one is saccade what is the rapid movement so from one saccade to uh, sorry one fixation to another fixation when we are moving that is called saccade right so there is one fixation here another fixation here another fixation here so what i am my eyes is doing so my eye will move from one then second then third right so this movement 
we will be calling it as saccade. Then what is regression? Regression when we are going on the opposite direction. Suppose I read, read the sentence from left to right while reading I need some more clarification on my previous word. So, what I am doing, what I am going to do, I am read back, right? I am, my eye is moving to the previous word. So, it is not from left to right, it is from right to left. So, if it is not in the same direction, it is just opposite direction in the saccade. So, that is regression, okay? Now, fourth one is the interest area. An area on which the eye movement is more than any other area. So, you are having saccad, you are having fixation, you are having saccad and you are reading it, right? But you can understand for a certain sentences or certain images that in some area your eyes fixations are more, okay? Your eye fixations are more as compared to any other area. So, that is your area of interest. So, it says that that particular area you are more interested to look into for some reason we do not know. So, that is the study that you need to conduct, okay? So, you can understand when we there is a visual stimuli here it is a text stimuli in this particular example you are reading the sentence from left to right and there is fixation in every word approximately and then what is happening there is a sequence of saccades there is some kind of regression where you are moving back and looking at and understanding and going ahead and then there is some area what is area of interest okay so you are having more fixation in that particular area so these are four basic uh, terms that you are going to un uh, use during your eye tracking system apart from that there are some more we are going to and you know, discuss it in next slides so what is the main functions of eye movement when we are talking about eye tracking system so place of information that interest us on the fovea is the uh, fixation and the saccade so what is fovea a small depression within the neurosensory retina where visual acuity is in the highest position okay and it keep the images stationary on the retina in spite of the movement of the object or one's head by a smooth pursuit okay slow movement then also it remains stationary it also prevents the stationary object from fading perceptually so micro saccades tremor and drift so let us understand what is micro saccad so a kind of uh, fixation of eye movement they are very small it's a kind of jerk involuntary eye movement when it happens when you have a long duration of fixation prolonged duration of fixation then there is small micro saccade so no small sudden movement of your pupil okay so that is micro saccade so you you are concentrating on a particular object there is a fixation of of a particular case for long duration still there is a little bit of jerking movement so that is micro saccade now something is called as tremor it's a continu constant and involuntary eye movement that is tremor tremor and third one is the drift a slow eye movement that is occurred between micro saccades during attempted fixation you are trying to concentrate so still there is a small small micro saccades are there so that is called but it is very slow okay so very slow eye movement that can occur between the micro saccades during the attempted fixation that is called drift now here we are going to measure all these things through eye tracking system and once we have all these detail we are going to interpret that result according to our research objective okay 
So, this particular technology that is called eye tracking system and the technology that is used for eye tracking system, the general use of this, of this real time eye movement data was relatively less focused in com human computer interaction. So, in 1999, these uh, two uh, scientists, Professor Kim and Professor Ramakrishnan, proposed a vision based eye gaze tracking method used which is used for the human computer interaction. They proposed eye gaze as input mode for efficient computer interface and eye movement were the focus of research in this eye gaze tracking uh, method. So, from there this eye tracking technology is being derived. So, what is gaze tracking? Now, we are talking about gaze. So, what is gaze tracking? Gaze tracking is typically employed to determine a person's focused attention. Okay? So, gaze means you are looking at an object uh, with a concentration, right? So, focused attention. Eye movement provides a rich and informative window into a person's thought and the intention because suppose you are looking at something and then you are thinking about something, you are trying to interpret it. So, that can be connected with the gaze timing. So, gaze is the point of regard, okay? So, you are trying to address it. So, gaze tracking is an analysis of eye tracking data with respect to head and visual sense. Gaze tracking mainly, mainly can be used in the following ways. First is cognitive and behavioral th therapy, visual search, marketing and advertising domain, neuroscience, psychology, human computer interaction, right? Little more about gaze tracking. So, the integration of eye and head position is used to compute the location of gaze in the visual scene. Suppose your neck is moving, right? Your head is moving. Eye is not moving. Eyeball is not moving. Eyeball is in a fixed condition. But if your head is moving, what is happening? Your gaze is changing. If you want to keep your gaze fixed when your neck is moving, so what you have to do? You have to change your eyeball direction, position, right? So, how these things are happening based on the visual stimuli, we are going to measure them using the eye tracking system. Now, you, you, uh, you can understand one situation. Suppose you are in a moving bus okay, and there is a signage on the uh, roadside. Now, when we are moving, your bus is moving, you really need to move your uh, neck, head and position your, of your eye to really read that information which is available. right? So, how you are fixing your gaze on that particular signage? board by moving your uh, neck, moving your head and moving your eyeball position, right? So, how, how, how these all studies can be done using this eye tracking system? So, simple eye tracker reports only the direction of the gaze relative to the head or for a fixed position of the eyeball. Such eye tracking systems are referred as intrusive or invasive system because some special, uh, special con uh, contacting devices we will be describing that are attached to the skin or to the eye to catch the user's gauge. So, the system which do not have any physical contact with user and the eye tracker apparatus are referred as non-intrusive system or remote system. So, we have something which is connected to the skin and to the eyeball. So, they, were, they are the intrusive system whereas some are can be operated remotely. Okay, we will be discussing them as well. So, when we are talking about eye gaze tracking, we need to understand how this whole system actually works. So, eye tracker basically captures the eye movement, how, how this eye movement by 
using the light source that illuminate the eye causes visu visual reflection okay so there is an is a light which is going to reflect through the eye and which is being captured by the system and they are going to understand what is the eye movement is happening so it uses a high resolution camera to capture eye image to show this reflection then this eye images is used to eye so first is capturing and then they are going to process it so these eye images is used to identify the reflection of the light source on the cornea and the pupil then vector formed by an angle between the cornea and pupil reflection is calculated based on the information the gaze direction is calculated and the vector calculation method include the velocity uh, what is the velocity maybe it is related to velocity based or depression based or based on the area of interest okay so we we can see how these things can be done so if this is the this is the system we can understand how things are being processed so visual axis how in the fovea how the images are being formed and if you can capture your whole eye movement you can understand what is the fixation what is the eye tracking or uh, ranges or duration and then we can interpret what is the level of concentration level interest area and so on okay more about gaze tracking so uh, we can have different types one is remote or screen based eye tracker and second is head mounted eye tracker two major type one is remote and screen based eye tracker and second one is the head mounted eye tracker so first understand first one that is the remote or screen based eye tracker so this type of tracker requires the respondents or participant to sit in front of a screen because it's a screen based to interact with the stimuli or the screen based content remote eye tracking uh, system track the eyes within certain limits called head box but the eye movement freedom is sufficiently large and respondents feel unrestricted okay following are the characteristics of the remote eye tracker it records the eye movement at a distance there are no attachment to the respondents okay there are no attachment so respondent is freely sitting in front of a screen computer and screen is need to be mounted respondent sit in front of the uh, eye tracking system observations on any screen based stimulus or uh, stimuli material or offline stimuli also can be recorded okay so that is the remote or screen based eye tracking system the second one which is very frequently used system that is the head mounted or mobile eye tracker so these are fitted like you know as we had some kind of head gear in eg here also we will have some kind of head gear so these are fitted near the eyes and allow the respondent or participant to move freely these are used in your uh, in any of the study need to perform the task in a natural environment so you are not fixed in the computer screen you can do whatever you want to do because you are free to move okay so you are going to this rack you are going to that rack you are doing your own activities okay you 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 do not you are not restricted to move okay so that is the beauty of this particular system and it, it, what it exactly this mobile eye tracker does it records the eye movement from a close range of course you cannot go beyond the range so that near data recording is not possible mounted on a light weight eye glass you can you need to wear an eye glass and respondent can walk around freely so these are the things are possible for the mobile or head mounted eye tracking system so the eye trackers whatever is currently available in the market these are some very frequently used uh, system 
you can have some more L, some more, but I have noted which are normally being used in different research laboratory. Very uh, common one is TOBI, then SMI vision, ILING, interactive minds, emotions, um, you know, uh, all these system, whatever I have mentioned over here, these are available. There may be some more, but these are something very commonly available in any of the research laboratory. So, when we are talking about eye tracking, we let us understand what are the varieties of matrices we are going to get from the eye tracking system. First is gaze point, we will be discussing each one separately. So, first, us, first understand uh, what are the varieties available. First is gaze point, second is fixation, then smooth pursuit, then saccade, scan path, heat map, area of interest, fixation sequence, respondent count and time spent. These are all 10 types of variables that we are going to get through the eye tracking system. Now, for each study, you may not need all these 10 variables to be interpreted. Based on your objective, you need to decide which are the variable are important for you and which you, you can do the analysis. You will get the recording, but you may not need to uh, know, analyze everything for every study. Based on your objective, you can choose any one of these variables or combination of 2 and 3. Okay? Now, let us understand each variable separately. First one is uh, fixation and gaze point. So, the main matrix used in eye tracking are the fixation and gaze. So, what is gaze point? The basic units of measuring the eye movement are the gaze point. Each gaze point is an individual record of participants gaze at a given moment. Okay, at a particular moment, what is the gaze the participant? has okay so the number of individual mom uh, moments per second depend on the sampling rate of the eye tracking system so in the systems or system like toby smi every system has their own speed okay own data sampling rate so based on that you can have different category so one guess point is one row captured by the eye tracking device in a particular case okay so that is the gaze point now fixation a fixation is a cluster so you understood gaze right it's a just a point now next is your fixation so fixation is a cluster denoted by a series of gaze point which are to be close in time and range so you have a gaze point here that is first gaze okay second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. So, now this becomes your fixation, right? So, gaze is a point and if you have some gaze at a particular very closed range and time, then that is the fixation. Okay. Fixation is a period which our eyes are fixed at a particular object in a stimuli. So, typically fixation durations are 100 to 300 milliseconds. Okay? Now, smooth pursuit. What exactly it means? When there is a movement and which is very smooth, there is no jerk. Okay? You can see here, it is a very smooth movement very smooth movement. So, that is the smooth pursuit. Exactly how we are going to explain it? It is an eye movement that allows the eye to closely follow the moving object and it is a voluntarily shift gaze, gaze. So, you are voluntarily doing it. It is not that you are forced to do it. You are doing it voluntarily. Example, when you are trying to follow a cloud movement, cloud is moving, your gaze is also moving. You are following the cloud, but it is a very smooth movement, right? So, that is the 
smooth pursuit. So, when there is something is happening in a particular moving object, how your eyes is moving, okay. So, that is your smooth pursuit. Next is saccade. So, a rapid eye movement. So, smooth pursuit is not saccade, okay. So, a rapid eye movement which redirects a visual axis to a new location. There is one guess, there is another. So, you are moving from here to here. So, your viewing axis, okay, optical axis from here you are moving here. So, it is moving redirecting to another point, okay. So, visual axis to another new point that is the saccade. So, rapid eye movement between fixation are referred to as saccade. So, reading a book, when you are reading a book and uh, the eye movements are not really smooth uh, across the line, but instead our eyes jump and pause generating the number of saccade. So, typically saccades are measured in angle velocity. On an average saccade span 3 to 7 to 9 characters along a line that contains the text, okay. This can be used to study the reading behavior as early or expert reader. So, somebody is reading. So, you know, kids when they are reading, they go slow, slow, one word, second word, third word like that. But when we adult, uh, we read, we read very fast, right? Or uh, maybe... Uh, all adults not read on a specific speed, okay, Every ha everyone has their own pattern of reading. So, those things can be uh, studied using the saccad. Then is scan path, name itself shows how my eyes are scanning the whole thing and how I am drawing that particular path. So, that is scan path. So, this particular thing is being you know described and defined by Devin and Lawrence in 1971 and the sequence of fixation saccard and fixation is referred as this scan path. So, there is a fixation, there is a saccard and then again it is a fixation. So, I am going to here here, 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 here. So, I am moving around. So, I am following the path of my fixation. So, that is called scan path. Heat map. This is very commonly used visualization tool when we are talking about the eye tracking system. So, it is a color coded representation that what is our area of interest, what is our gaze point where we are looking at for long duration. So, everything is being color coded and we can understand from those color that how my eyes are moving. So, this particular static or dynamic or static aggression of gaze points and the fixation generate the distribution of visual attention. Okay. So, distribution of visual attention we can present represent it through the heat map. So, heat map serves as an excellent method for the visualization as I mentioned earlier. It actually shows the maximum attention area of stimulus. So, heat map used uh, easy to read color coded scheme. If it is red that means you have highest amount of concentration and yellow and green shows less amount of concentration as compared to red area okay so that is giving you a direction that which component is taking more attention from the viewer okay so using heat map you can have very nice visualization that how your attention is uh, you know distributed in the whole uh, screen or in the visual uh, platform okay now area of interest we already discussed this one a little bit so area of interest are the sub regions of the stimulus object displayed on a screen defined by the user so area of interest are defined by more fixation and saccades on a particular area and matrix to separate area of interest are evaluated with the performance of two or more specific areas in the same picture, website 
or any uh, program interface okay so that way we use area of interest and we redesign the things properly next is fixation sequence again from name you can understand what is the meaning of fix fixation sequence so it can be generated based on the fixation position and the time information so the sequence first this is my fixation point then this then this then this maybe again coming back here so one two three four and again five so this is the kind of sequence i have right so it depends on where a respondent looks and for how long we can build an order of attention where the respondent looked first and then second and so on so this particular parameter is used in research as it reflects the salient element in the display or in an environment that can catch much attention so suppose we are designing some web page okay which component need to be put where and how it is going to attract or uh, is going to create the visual attention for the viewer. So, th these are the things to be taken care of when we are talking about uh, fixation sequence. So, area of interest uh, that response look at first are visually more salient and hence are the more interesting area. Okay, So, these are connected. So, what is the kind of statistics we can play here L lot of you know uh, correlation then association all those things uh, we can do and we can have very nice uh, analytical uh, research through these type of variables now respondent count this particular metric allows uh, to extract more information about the number of respondent at gaze direction towards a specific area of interest. Higher respondent count indicate that fixation and gaze points are driven by some external aspect in the stimuli. So, through this we can understand the respondent count and using that we can understand what are the external stimuli are there and how the external stimuli is going to affect your visual attention. Okay, time spent. The time spent specifies the amount of time that respondents have spent on a specific area of interest and it is often indicates motivation and conscious attention because long prevalence at a region to a high level of interest. Okay, so this is also a very important variable and this particular variable can be correlated or you know associated with many other previous variables and you can have very interesting you know uh, results coming out from your data whichever you are going to collect okay now let us discuss little bit about the basic procedure that we are going to follow so we need a light source and we need a camera so, each eye tracking system should have these two basic things. Okay? So, the light source usually it is infrared is directed towards the eye and the camera which is, uh, which is going to track the reflection of the light source along with the visible uh, ocular features such as pupil. This data is used to extrapolate the rotation of the eye and ultimately the direction of gaze. So, additional information such as blink frequency, changes in the pupil diameter, these are also can be detected by the eye tracking system. Okay? So, eye trackers collect raw eye movement data points every 16.6 or uh, 8.3 milliseconds depending whether the sampling data range is 60 hertz or 120 hertz and each data point will be identified by the time stamp or uh, and the xy coordinate and spent to the analysis application database running to the computer connected to the eye tracking system. So, in order to visualize the data, these coordinates will then be processed further 
into fixation and overlaid on a video recording of the stimuli used in the rest. Okay. So, how do we prepare? So, we have to uh, create the ID uh, for uh, and you need to do the calibration first that is the first requirement. Second is you have to do the recording that is the instruction stimulus and preview and you need to conduct the experiment and close it. Then how do you analyze it? AOI, gaze plot, heat map all these things you can analyze. For AOI, you have to define the area of stimulus at which analysis of the eye activity is being made for gaze plot. So, these are the things you are going to get from the uh, system. Eye movement sequence, order and duration of gaze fixation of the individual subject. Heat map is very important, it is a qualitative data. So, qualitative analysis of the visual activity by color. So, red means highest amount of attention, yellow is lesser than red and green is the least amount of attention in a particular visual field. Okay. So, different methods are available, we are going to give very brief description of it and then based on the availability of the system whatever you have you can choose any one of them and whatever we discussed about the uh, no uh, variables that you can use for your uh, results and your uh, interpretation and your uh, objective validation okay the first one is the electrooculography second is uh, scleral search uh, coil, then infrared oculography and video oculography. So, these are the four basic types. You can have any one of them and based, uh, you, you know, you can use them as per your requirement. So, these are the things we are going to learn today. So, I will give very brief description. We have very short duration of time. We, we may not be able to describe each in detail. However, I am going to tell you the basic of each system separately. So, what is electrooculography? So, electro that means you are going to understand the electrical responses, right? So, in this particular method, the sensors are attached to the skin around the eyes to measure an electrical field exist when your eye is rotating, okay? So, by recording small differences in the skin potential around the eye, the position of the eye can be estimated. So, this is just a brief description. Now, if you want to know this particular system in detail, you have to do it by yourself. This is out of the scope right now because it needs lot of time. Okay. Next is uh, scleral search coil. So, here uh, from the name again you can understand it is a you are going to insert the coil and we are going to understand or monitor the eyeball movement. So, when a coil of wire moves in a magnetic field, the uh, field induces a voltage in a coil and if the coil is attached to the eye, then a sig signal of eye position can be recorded and if it is being produced, it that can be recorded. So, in order to measure the human eye movement, a very small coil of wire are embedded in a modified contact lens. So, you are inserting. So, it is a in vivo, right? So, this is inserted into the eye after a local anesthesia uh, is being introduced. So, an integrated mirror in the contact lens allows the measuring reflected eye. Like this type of technique need to be uh, taken care with a proper uh, facility and with lot of expertise, okay. So, uh, who are very much capable enough to handle such instrument, they only should do this because here we are talking about local anesthesia and we are talking about inserting that particular 
modified lens in the eye and then the capturing the data. So, it is not very easy. So, uh, if you are doing it do with, uh, uh, with a proper supervision of the experts and with a proper training. Without that we should not try this out. Third one is infrared oculography. This is very commonly used and mostly uh, in laboratories we have this type of facilities. So, it measures the intensity of the reflected eye, uh, reflected light and in this method the eye is illuminated by the infrared light which is reflected by the sclera and the light source and the sensors can be placed on a spherical glasses. So, it is a kind of eye glass and you have a camera in position different based on the company you have the position of the camera and then you can measure them. Okay. So, this is the infrared oculography and the last one is the video oculography. So, what it does? It is the most widely used eye tracking method in commercial eye tracker and it uses single or multiple cameras to determine the movement of the eye using the information obtained from the image captured. Okay. So, from there they, they do the video recording of your eye and it gives it analyze the data in background and it gives the results about the fixation, it uh, gives the results about the saccades, eye scan path and everything. Okay. That is all the varieties of techniques available for the eye tracking. There are many more things to be discussed as uh, when we are talking about eye tracking. However, we have limited scope. So, what I suggest everyone whatever is available with you. So, you try the data, you try how to handle uh, the instrument, how to collect data and what uh, how do analyze the data that is very important. So, based on your objective which variable to be selected for your uh, no uh, for your interpretation. So, those things you should practice and if you have any specific research project which is intended to use the eye tracking system then you can try it out and uh, if you have any doubt uh, in the you know analysis part or data collection part or understanding of any one of the variable you can write back or call or uh, you know email me uh, for further discussion. So, that is all for eye tracking system and uh, we will proceed with some more measurement of the cognitive behavior like heart and cream in next classes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.